That's right. Mr. Andy News got us a new solo leveling video out. Let's see what he has to say. One of the biggest differences between the anime manhwa and web novel is the state of mind in which Sung Jinu finds himself in. His level of power is generally the same, but there's a distinct way in which he chooses to approach combat in each of them. Okay. The anime and manhwa has him struggle and be a bit more cautious, whereas in the novel the instance dungeon was nothing more than a cakewalk. A simple XP farm in which hmm. he was literally spawn trapping. I heard a lot of people were saying that um, based on the webtoon or even like the source material, like the pacing was definitely slower and they're taking the progression. They're really taking their time with the progression, which might be true since like this apparently was like kind of just like a cakewalk. But to me, I felt like even the goblins in the beginning were pretty hard. The red lichen was kind of hard. And then the snake too, that shit was next level. So if you want to see Sung's gamer moves and the more fleshed out methods he chose to level up here, stick around as we'll go through all the changes the anime made. Let's get started. Yes, sir. Episode 4, I Gotta Get Stronger. Covering chapters 13 to 16 from the web novel and chapters 14 to 17 from the manhwa. To start things out right here at the entrance of the instance dungeon, with Sung's initial plan being to simply check out the dungeon then leave, the fact it trapped him inside made him panic. Not that short-lived shock we got in the anime, but instead straight up terror as he screamed and punched the invisible wall. Oh, him. he did? The whole thing was far beyond what he had originally planned for. I mean, if you think about it, you just got out of this traumatic experience by being stuck in a double dungeon. And you're out. And now you go back in and it looks like you're trapped again. Yeah, the trauma, the PTSD would make me do the because same. Because what he expected to find was a gator secret entrance somewhere. Not this significantly worse scenario in which he couldn't even escape anymore. It's when he finally commits to the challenge ahead of him that the first major difference is with the goblins. If you read the manhwa or read the books, you'd know that these goblins weren't an enemy inherent to the dungeon. No. The reason I think the anime decided to include them then was because... Because he only gets stabbed and bodied by goblins in like episode 1 and 2 during the flashbacks? It's the enemy we've seen Sung fight and lose to twice before, <laughs> yeah. they still has this space level marker for Sung's starting point. <laughs> They're the only enemy we know he can sort of handle and it's that- Sort of handle, sure. Them ...a good indicator of how strong he's- Yo, the summon from the gear shop again. Sorry, our, our little item pouch, right? That summoning, uh, it just looks so cool with all the electric effects. I'm so far. So, by seeing him fight and defeat them easily now, we know at the very least that Sung is stronger and more competent than he was before. Now, it's his first encounter with the wolf that that's when we get to that first major difference in Sung's state of mind I was talking about. Okay. You see, in the manhwa and anime, Sung was a bit more passive and let enemies get the jump on him, but it was in the novels that he did the opposite. He could sense that something was stalking him, and so he didn't know exactly where it was. He knew from experience it was waiting for an opportunity. An opportunity Sung would give by faking an opening, then immediately reverse by swinging his sword right as the lichen jumped out. We watched the other guy too. I think it was his, his name was Ace Locks video, but the lichen definitely was a lot bigger and scary looking in the uh, the webtoon compared to the anime, huh? One shotting the beast in a swift reflex that impressed even himself. Oh, one shot him? Oh, that's kind of really cool. What the fuck? That's another difference from the manhwa and anime, but as I had mentioned last video, the sword was something Sung was already aware of. Mr. Kim he sword. He equipped the weapon as soon as he entered and was ready to use it straight from the get-go. Two more lichens would then jump out right after the first, and despite Sung's sword being stuck just like in the anime, Sung had no problem abandoning it so he could swing his fist The 2,000-something sword, the I think, yeah. Able to withstand it in the anime, though. That single punch was enough to one-shot it, too. Yo, I'm telling you, that at this point, we should have realized that, holy shit, this weapon sucks. Yo, we should just fucking just use our hands. Exploding its head the moment his fist made. Look at this fucking Shoryuken, dude. <laughs> this is fucking animal abuse. Impact with it. Now, you may be wondering how that was even possible, but the core reason behind it is because in the novels, the Lycan's names were white. They weren't red to show. Ah, interesting. Well, I wonder. It was. I guess it was just try. They m intentionally made it a harder fight because red name means obviously it's like kind of a little bit out of our league. Orange is like about the same range, and white is just like easy. But, but they were interesting. Stronger, but instead immediately white to indicate that they mm. were already weaker than Sung. So though the anime and the novel had the same strength stat for Sung, it seems the power of the lichens they were facing was different. The anime's obviously being a little bit harder, and the novel's being somewhat easier. That's not to discount the confidence and experience Sung had displayed while fighting them in the novels, though, but there was a much more gradual progression towards that confidence in the anime. Yes, and I think that gradual progression, the fact that they're taking their sweet time with them, 
is going to pay off. We don't want to rush with it. This is important foundations to make us feel like he has deserved this. For the Manwa, it was here that they decided to keep Sung's strength at 20 in the beginning. A decision huh. I think makes the most sense for when Sung was actually struggling since to have his strength at 30 would mean he should really be one-shotting them. What I mean is that a strength of 30 plus doesn't properly reflect the power of someone who's level 2. As Sung determined himself, his glass cannon strength build placed his power more akin to someone who was level 20. Okay. So, what do you get when a level 2... I wonder what these, like, levels kind of, like, rank in terms of the, the letter-based system, right? Because, like, okay, level 10, level 20, but, but, but these other non-players don't have a level system. They're, like, you know, D, E, C, you know, stuff like that. Hunts with the strength of a level 20 in the beginner area? Well, that's what Sung believed to be power leveling. He'd effectively tripled his power stat and was now abusing <laughs> that power to farm levels here. Yeah. To say his actual power was tripled from what it was initially, though, wasn't entirely accurate since Sung felt he was even stronger than that. You see, back at the More? hospital, he'd tested the difference between one or two points, but now that that strength had increased threefold, he knew for sure the amount it was increasing each time wasn't linear. To him, We're it exponentially like growing. Exponential boost in power. So each stat is more like a like like each plus one is not a linear curve. That's what he's saying, right? It's not just like this. He's actually going like this. Interesting. A level of growth that only got faster the farther along you were. So with that being the only explanation, then we should just fucking one trick pony. If there's an exponential curve to our scaling with the stats. More vertical investment into one stat is going to be way better than horizontal investment into other, all the other stats, which doesn't scale as hard then, right? For his newly acquired destructive power, Sung also figured his significant boost in speed was because of the strength attribute too. That shit was pretty funny. When he was jumping around like he was on the moon because of his like newfound strength and he's just, you know, can just jump everywhere. What he initially thought was all agility in actuality had nothing to do with agility. His strength was increasing his muscles and that in Yes. <laughs> they keep showing us his fucking, uh, what's it called? <laughs> Look at this shit. His forearms. Like, Whoa, it's so manly. Turn was also making him faster. Wait, wait, wait. Who is this? Who is this? Hold on. Someone made an entrance Strength here. Was increasing his wait, muscles right side. Look at it. Was oh, that's a, a dude from the Fate series, right? Is that is, is this a scene to sh Shiro from Fate? Is that to show his muscles too? Is there a scene where he's like, oh, look how strong I become. Look at my forearms. <laughs> also making him faster. So, what exactly does the agility stat do then? Well, that- What does the agility stat do? Yeah, it's the strength made you already fast. That's a weird thing too, huh? Because like, when you think of strength, you think like unga boonga strength. Just like maybe like upper body strength or some shit. Like being able to swing a sword faster. But technically, strength just like fundamentally enhances your physical abilities. So that means your speed would indirectly would be, you know, be faster than that. Agility. AGI. What is that gonna be then? Agility is uh, dexterity, just like how nimble you are, right? Even though you're, you're pretty like good with swinging a sword, maybe agility makes you a little bit more dexterous, you know, sleight of hand, stuff like that. I don't know. That's something Sung knew he'd have to use points to find out. A price he wasn't willing to... Honestly, I still, I just start stacking a little bit more on strength because like this is going pretty well. We've got the vertical, like, like the exponential scaling going. Do I want to waste these three points, the limited points I got on the like, like dex right now? I'm not sure. Hey, since why bother Sorry, agility. already does what he thought agility did. Of course, he could always find out just by leveling. So that was his plan to figure out what. Oh, yeah, that works, too. Did. Sure, the increase to them would be marginal at the beginning, but over time, he knew eventually a difference would be felt. Now. Sung was pretty disappointed that there weren't any essence stones, since for many the whole point of being a hunter was to gather these essence stones. But we got gold instead, it's like a different currency. We have our own gold currency in game. How does that translate to the Korean one? Stones. To him it just felt wrong to walk away empty handed from a hunt like this. It was the first indicator this dungeon was fundamentally different from a gate. Luckily, they did give him drops yeah. instead, but with no context on what the gold they were sold for was worth, Sun could- How do we exchange that gold for actual, like, currency in the real world? Only hope that their value would eventually add up to something better. He mm. was the type of player to gather anything and everything, no matter how invaluable it Board was. Bro's hoarding. In fact, he had even become a bit sad when he realized 20 gold was left on the table from that lichen whose head he punched off. That disappointment didn't last very long, though, as when he turned around to find 20 There's more a lot lichens, more. his face lit up at the thought of how much gold he was about to get. Money! He was to see so many more mobs waiting to get farmed by him. 
a stark contrast from the nervous anxiety Sung proceeded with in the anime. Whereas he was happy for a fair fight and challenge there, in the novels Sung's greed shone through as all he could think about was what he could gain from them. So this would constitute the entirety of the dungeon's first floor, and by the end, Sung had gone up to level seven. Okay. His stats had gone up to what you see here, and the only. But like, what does these levels mean in terms of the rankings that we're familiar with? With you know, you know, rating other adventurers or hunters. The only drops he got were the ones we saw in the anime. Sung surprisingly didn't suffer from that gamer's hoarding mentality, though, and was able to sell his entire stash minus the teleportation stone, nice. granting him a total bank of 1,060 gold. You know what would be kind of funny? If he, like, you know what a really annoying thing in these kind of game menus is, um, when you sell shit, well, it, 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 it's all cluttered all over the place, right? And sometimes it's not just in this nice and orderly fashion where everything is lined up in the top row left to right. Sometimes your inventory box is all full everywhere. There might be gaps. There might be missing place, pieces like that. And sometimes you try to do... Sometimes if the game is like good enough and they have the quality of life of clicking sort all so that everything just kind of pushes all the way to the top row. You know what I'm saying? Instead of being all scattered out. It'd be funny if there was a scene where he has to individually pick shit and gets annoyed with it. I don't know. Just like a little, little gamer meme. Minus the teleportation stone, granting him a total bank of 1,060 gold. How much money is that? It's in the manhwa that Sung's sword was pretty beat up at this point, and that would lead into the reasoning behind why he chose not to fight with weapons anymore. You see, before he'd once spent $350 on a dagger, Damn. and while it definitely made hunting a whole lot easier, did that shit break from the goblins? Here for him, it unfortunately broke while $350 gone from a fucking goblin fight, dude. Fighting the boss. Bruh. His total gains were only three essence stones worth of money that day, so with that being only about two hundred and forty dollars. See, this is where I'm getting the fucking value from you, fucking monkeys. Everyone coming in, you're saying that stone is not. Why do you say it's eighty dollars? Cause this dude is telling me each fucking stone is eighty dollars. Eighty times three is two hundred forty. Simple fucking math. And if you have a problem with that, fucking go type on Andy News's video and ask him why he thinks it's eighty dollars. I don't know. I'm a fucking dumb reactor. That's just fucking reacts. The money he spent far exceeded the money he'd earned. A costly lesson that made him never want to buy a weapon again. Thus, the reason from that point on he only fought with his fist. What the fuck is this monster? There's no way this shit's a fucking e rank dungeon or a D-rank dungeon. Now, to add a bit more clarity to the notion this wasn't something Sung understood, there was less uncertainty in the fact he was being manipulated. The mm -hmm. way this dungeon worked exactly like a video game made him positive something or someone had created it for him. Yes, the creator of this game that he is a player of, which is something that no one fucking talks about or even mentions because people said spoilers, but even then, anime onlys or other people, they could slowly nudge or even just talk about that he's a fucking player. What does that imply? What is this game? Who's the creator? It was a for sure indicator that some unknown being was controlling him. Yes. So, unlike how Sung was just speculating right, that some it. higher power wanted him there, in the manhwa he knew this was exactly where they wanted him to be. He was aware he was a pawn in someone else's game, yet continued anyway since this was the only path to power. Does the creator of this game want him to succeed? I guess they do if they're not intentionally fucking him up in the dungeon and slowly scaling that's like relative to his level. It's here the novels really flesh out the next part because there was a lot of focus on what Sung had done to level up some more. He had essentially refined the process into a basic spawn trap system. He discovered the dungeon respawned its monsters on a timer. Oh, and bro's fucking spawn timing. Uh, sorry, bro's fucking spawn camping. So there's a timer on the spawn, so he just kind of just waited in camp. So bro just fucking spawn, spawn camped all of them and just immediately hit them in the back. The time he took to clear the monsters on the second floor that the lichens on the first would be back and waiting for him. So it was once sunk. Oh, it's just optimal just farming. Between the first and second. This is like Maple Story, going back and forth between maps because the spawn time is sometimes too slow. Floor that he would continuously farm all monsters within. Smart, his you're gaming. It was an eight-hour grind in which he had gotten so familiar with that. Eight-hour grind. Predict where the monsters were going to attack him from. Honestly, you can even fucking expect where the monsters are gonna spawn from right before they even show up because you get so used to it. Since they would always respawn in the exact same place. Exactly. Every cycle made him more familiar with where each and all of them would come from, turning his grind into a mundane farming route just short of spawn camping. It's an approach that kind of trivializes the trials and tribulations of the first dungeon, but still would have been fun to see him make his way to that point. 
the Manwa does show it to some capacity, but not to the extent that he's... Dude, he already looks so cool. He already looks so fucking cool. He already has that glowing eye effect going on, even before Kasuka, the snake fight. Repeating the process multiple times over. It was after this that Sung was now at level 15, and with his agility stat, now at a massive 24. I can't believe he still didn't equip the fucking title. Like, he had the Wolf Slayer title before, after being the Red Lycan. And, like... It's 40% boosted damage or more stats against, like, those beast monsters that he's fighting. Like, he still doesn't have it on. That's, that's crazy. And with his agility stat now at a massive 24, he could finally discern what it was that this attribute What does it do? It didn't increase physical speed like how he thought, but instead sped up his vision, which in turn made it seem like enemies were slower. What? Agility is the stat? That makes you read people faster and makes it seem like they're coming at you slower? If anything, I thought that sense or perception could be somehow mixed into that. That just makes a little bit more sense. I know that that's more intuition and being able to detect like the monster where they are depending on their energy level or something, but... Agility? That's just, just the agility of your fucking eyes. So what do you mean? Ancient, every time he looped through the dungeon, the creatures he fought gradually became slower to him. Okay. Eventually getting to the point where all of them moved in what seemed yeah, like, it's like slow a motion to him. Mental agility, it just looks like slow motion. Bro is just processing shit at a faster level. Right? That's what that's what all that is. It's it's, it's the fucking showering gun. It, it's it's he's literally just processing stuff at a faster level and they're coming at you at. So it's like your brain's just like working faster, your visual acuity is working faster, you're able to track what's going on. Huh. That's a very unorthodox way of representing a, a, rep a representation of agility, the stat. It was as if time itself had slowed down. Interesting. This made it easier to dodge incoming attacks and that in turn- Does that mean the more you fucking put into agility, the more time will feel like it's stopping? <laughs> ...allowed for more opportunity to counterattack. Okay. It had created a larger window in which he could attack and his enemies couldn't. I mean... Because we're able to dodge all that, we have more opportunities to counterattack. If you think about it in terms of that, we're getting more hits in, being more optimal, dodging shit, and that sounds a lot more like agility now, right? Yeah, like the basis is this like mental agility, but the fact that he can get more attacks in more swiftly, more accurately, that does sound a little bit more agility now, yeah? A newfound phenomenon that certainly made him feel more agile. Okay. His disparity only got larger the more he leveled, and by the time he had peaked at level 15, Sung had come to realize his own movements made himself seem faster to the enemies too. Mm. So, with his strength increasing his speed and agility making him see things faster, together they were a double positive that worked both for him and against his enemies. What about the uh, intelligence though? So far we have strength, we know that. Agility, percept sense, we've already done that. But intelligence is something that we haven't really touched on yet, right? So what, he just gets smarter? There has to be some kind of magic component to it. Intelligence is used in like wizards, you know, magicians. So like, at some point we gotta have magic, but we don't even have a class yet. So I think we're kind of jumping too, too early. I think that's a stat, say for later, right? A nice bit of synergy that made combat easier. The next attribute Sung had started to take note of was the way perception made the boss on the third floor seem mm. increasingly dangerous. Like the intuition, yeah. At first it was only this sense minor it. tingling, then the more he leveled and the more perception increased, the more that emanating sense of danger started to feel stronger. Perception didn't just provide some sort of spidey sense though, since as he descended from the second floor down to the third, despite very little light making things visible, Sung could see just fine likely because of perception too. He believed it went to improve his eyesight as well. It was when Sung finally made it down and encountered the boss that the whole thing was a lot shorter than it was in the anime. Oh? The snake got one surprise attack which shattered Sung's sword, then after that it was pretty much game over. <laughs> All Sung had to do was hone his agility and focus on his target, then, and then maneuver bare himself in a way that would allow him to grab hold of it. It was a simple task that required only one dodge to do so, the rest of which was just a matter of strength. See, his eyes are glowing again. I love it when his eyes start glowing. With almost 50 points now amplifying his power, Still no title. crushing Kasuka's skull wasn't a matter of if, but rather when. There was no doubt in Sung's mind on whether he could penetrate its armor or not. The only thing Sung was thinking- There was no doubt. 
In the anime, we fucked around with the sword for the longest time, and as soon as it broke, we had no choice but to hold, like, you know, bear hug him, right? And then we kind of crushed it. So I wonder at that point when he feel felt like the, the snake's armor being, like, crushed by his own hands, did he realize that, oh, shit, I'm pretty strong? Because, like, I felt like he didn't really know until that, like, accidental moment, which came out of desperation. Thinking about while doing this was a bunch of what-ifs for the path he took to get here. He wondered if things would have been different had he not power leveled or focused everything on strength. He wondered whether he could have handled the boss if he didn't grind first beforehand. I th no shot. No fucking shot. No amount of plot armor would have made you survive this. Maybe. I don't know. I just feel like going all in on strength was the smartest thing he could do because right now we are just like a fucking beginner adventurer with no class. So what are we going to do? You're raising the foundations. The strength did come in super clutch. Unfortunately, that didn't really matter anymore as the opportunities Sung saw were the ones he took. A series of cautious decisions that now left Triple him level up. up! Of course, no one really hunted a boss just for experience points, so what Sung was looking forward to the most was the- The fucking rare loot, baby. Kasaka dagger, that looks sick. The item drops. He was excited to see what loot he would get from the snake he just- and we don't have to spend money for weapons anymore because if the monster drops the weapons, that's just, you know, free fucking weapon. But then you could also maybe sell the weapon. I'm not sure. I, we're not in a state to sell weapons just yet. But, you know, how much gold would that earn us? And how much, you know, how, how would that gold then be transferred into actual currency, right? It's defeated. Both were the same as what we saw, but the Venom wasn't a 35. The Venom is really interesting because it comes with such a negative side effect. It's like, why the fuck would you ever want to use this? But... I don't know, it seems like a really rare drop. Somehow, Kasuka's Venom Fang doesn't seem as important because it says level of difficulty is only C. Which is interesting because Kasuka's Venom Gland level of difficulty is A. Is that just the RNG drop? Because like, it both drop from the same monster, so you you think that the difficulty level will be the same, but like, the only way that this level of difficulty is higher is that it's like a rarer drop so like i don't know every like fuck it's like a five percent drop compared to kasuka's venom fang which is like i don't know 40 50 percent what what the fuck does this mean five percent decrease in strength but instead just a 35 point decrease that may seem like a lot right now but yeah. at the later levels when sung has say over 100 strength i guess then it wouldn't really matter because we're so over leveled and more stats a 35 point decrease won't be as much of a debuff as it would be now to use that potion now would be to deplete pretty much all his strength. Sung would then exit the dungeon, and that would wrap up his intense 9-hour level grind. 9 hours. He still carried his sword. Bro, 9 hours and he came out and he still soloed that fucking golem thing. Or it is because broken items like that can't be stored in inventory anymore. What? Now, for a bit more... Broken items can't even stored in the inventory? I thought that broken items just like did no damage in games and you have to go back to the blacksmith to like repair it, but damn, that even sucks even more. Text on the military's involvement with gates, they're usually only ever called in when a dungeon break occurs. Those don't really happen very often anymore, but there are times when a gate would spawn somewhere hidden and go unnoticed. Rare occasions that call for the military to be sent in first, mainly to protect the citizens and buy time for their escape. The other reason is to buy time for the hunters to get there, but with civilians being the highest priority, the military was the willing sacrifice standing between them and the monsters. Military is basically useless, right? Like, what are you gonna do with these guns? Guns never do shit in anime. I don't care if Toji killed that girl. That was a fucking cheap shot. I don't care. She was also a regular human. She wasn't really, but you know what I mean. These guns ain't gonna do shit. The military people, what is your- what- why do you exist just to keep people in line? Noble meat shields who knew their weapons were ineffective. Noble meat shields who knew their weapons were ineffective. Talk your shit, King. Any news is right. Effective yet proudly defended their fellow countrymen regardless. <laughs> proudly defended their pet. Okay, I sound like a fucking asshole now. <laughs> so, when the soldier who saw Sung thanked him for his service, oh. Sung honestly felt Thank it you, should sir. have been the other way around. He was surprised to hear gratitude from a- He already looks different. In the webtoon. Damn, he's even showing his fucking cleavage, dude. Oh my god, look at those pecs. Look at those fucking collarbones. Like, at this point, he already looks a lot more closer to that, like, Korean idol Sung Jin Mu that we've seen in the posters compared to, you know, little boy Sung Jin Mu that we have in the anime right now. I think it's just the haircut. It's straight up the haircut, dude, because he has more, like, side hair that comes out that makes him look like a mob character for some reason. I'm a person whose life was most at risk here. Either way. It was only natural to appreciate yes, the shared goal of protecting the people. 
it's when Sung is finally led to where the boss fight is that the situation is shown to be a lot more dire. What I mean is that, with the party wipe being all but inevitable, the tank knew that he would have to be the one to do something. <laughs> Useless DPS, literally on the ground, fucking doesn't know boss mechanics, already wiped, wasting the healer's time, poor tank man, I feel so bad for this tank. His shield was cracking and the healing just- Please somebody anymore, save him. So if any of them were gonna make it out alive, there was only one option left for him to choose from. Fucking and run. That was to stay by I would not. Honestly, nah, nah. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a selfish piece of shit. I'm not sacrificing life, my life for these, you know, fucking civilians that are like, oh, these shitty hunters, worth my taxpayer money? No, I don't give a fuck. Fuck every one of you. I'm going to think for myself. I'm going to leave. Fuck you and the healer. DPS sucks too. Peace. Behind while letting everyone else flee. He decided that no one else should have to die, and he alone would buy time so that- He's a hero. I am not a hero. Everyone else could live. Hoping that in the time it took for the golem to defeat him, another higher ranked hunter would be able to make it here. I mean... So, it was right as this tank was about to the order that Sung's sword wouldn't just shatter the golem's defenses, but instead straight up one-shot it and explode its head. In the webtoon, so it did just one shot it because in the anime it made it sound like we just kind of pushed it over the edge. It was almost like the monster was already done, but for some reason, like, they just couldn't do it because of their lack of DPS, and Sung Jinmu basically gave it a little push. But in my head canon, it's like, nah, they didn't do anything to it. They're fucking trash. And Sung Jin Woo one shot it by himself, and then they claimed the kill afterwards. That's my head canon. One shot it and explode its head. Only the tank was close enough to see it happen, though, so everyone else who was doing damage naturally thought it was them providing the finishing blow to it. It was Weak. a mistaken belief that brought with it the misconception that the essence stones should be theirs, but that wasn't an argument Sung wanted to get into right now. Damn. Imagine the loot. Imagine it. Wait, wait, wait. How, how does that work? So like, oh, no, 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 no. This is different from an instance dungeon mob because the instance dungeon mob dropped us, you know, gold as well as different loot. But like, this is a gate monster. So if we kill the gate monster, will we get the loot? I don't know. Maybe the loot's invisible to these people. We haven't had an example like that because we haven't gone into an actual gate after we got our powers just yet. He didn't have proof that he was the one who slayed it, and even if he did, Maybe he would just have to be reveal how a rank like him became so powerful. It was a cost that simply wasn't worth the price of a D-rank Essence Stone. See? How are we gonna now kind of like hide our powers? Because one of the interesting things is when you start becoming so strong like this, they're gonna start getting suspicious. And that Mr. Mr. Wu guy, remember with the one little bang that comes down with the device that came to our hospital? He will for sure be more suspicious of us because we're already his target. Like, we, he, he's already kind of got us on our radar. And if we start getting, like, recognition for stuff like this, then it looks bad? Why is it bad? Why would Mr. Wu finding us be bad? Wouldn't it lead to better opportunities? Do we need to lay low? Do we need to hide our strength? I don't think this is a show where we need to really hide our strength other than the fact that it's a little bit suspicious that, you know... Hunters who are who should be awakened to a static level is and is, is now growing. So that development, I guess, might be kind of dangerous because it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You're not like any other hunters. Maybe the government will swoop in and start doing tests on us. To him, this unique ability was something far more valuable. Hmm. So with that bringing us to the end of the episode, that's pretty much everything we missed from episode four. All right. A different look into how Sung approached his leveling, and a more detailed overview into how he's adapting to everything. So, if you liked what you saw and- No, you didn't talk about the fucking aura! What is this?! Want to see more, then be sure and to why, like why are you teasing me, any news? You fucking knew this happened, but you didn't talk about it! <sighs> I'm sure if it's for good reasons. Alright, you all know what to do. Please subscribe to Mr. Anius' channel. Like this video if you did. What is this? Some people are saying that this aura was supposed to be an indicator of his, like, new, uh, powers, but I think everyone's just capping. They don't really know what they're talking about. Some of them may, might be no, but no spoilers, guys. No spoilers.